Welcome to Focus Gaming News here at the media booth. We're at Sigma Europe 2023 and I'm speaking to Levshina Olga, who is the Chief Commercial Officer at B Gaming. And so a huge welcome. You look amazing. Thank you. Thank you. You've got a really it. big smile on your face. I'm guessing that you've had a good time at Sigma, but possibly not the late nights and the parties last night because you look really <laughs> bright. Have you enjoyed yourself? Yeah, definitely. I enjoyed all the time which we spent here. I love the place. I love the, our boost. That's, that's gorgeous. I'm always proud of our brand and our colors. Yeah, today I'm in blue, but actually we have uh, yellow colors. Yeah, that our logo and our brand. That's why it's so always bright. I love bright colors. And that's why I'm just really excited about our future cooperation, which we catch uh, here, our clients whom we met here just to support our brand. That's, that's always amazing. Always I am going to yeah. drill down and ask you all. I'm going to grill you on that in just a second. And I have seen your stand and it is is fantastic and we'll come back to talk about that in a minute um, but B Gaming is a creative and fast growing iGaming content provider since 2012 so you guys are about 11 years old we've put all the knowledge we've gained into the creation of the B Gaming brand you just mentioned the brand a second ago which came to life in 2018 today's B Gaming portfolios includes 100 plus products such as video slots video poker lottery and more what am i missing tell me what i'm missing out from that because that's a pretty comprehensive description but but so you've been around since 2018 or you've been around since 2012 yeah, actually in our first game was released in 2012 yeah that's the time when we when we released the game but like independent studio which starts growing very fast we start uh, uh from 2018 yeah and just last year, like this year, we uh, celebra celebrated our fifth anniversary Brilliant. of the gaming brand. Yes. Brilliant. And right now, every year, I could say we're growing like extremely fast in terms of the quality of our games, mechanics, which we are offering to the market types of the games we are offering to our players. Yeah. Because right now we are very focused on the player driven approach yeah, to increase the engagement and retention of our players in our games. That's probably the main focus we are. You see, now, now I yeah. have a whole bunch of other questions. I'm going to just put the script down for a second because I'm going to just go completely off script and ask you. So you, obviously you're coming up with these games of fast growth, which is amazing. And we'll right. come back to that in a second. But just to put it in context, you know, there's a lot of uh, game content uh, creators and normally there is a, a trend either to go for something which is really innovative and risk-taking and come to the market with something new bright that nobody else is doing or there's a kind of a, a or there's kind of a, um, a, a theory to stick to gameplay which is well tried and tested. Where do you guys sit in that kind of spectrum between innovation risk taking and sticking with what the customer knows? Mm -hmm. Definitely we are focused on the customer demand, I could say, because right now we start to produce the games tailored to the market, uh, researching what the market wants which is the best mechanics and best thematical on the market. And then we are trying to approach the games according to that requirements. For sure, we are using and trying to, to catch all the trends which is uh, on the market, yeah. Things which we would like to implement in our games as well, just to, for the players to say, wow. Even now we created a sc um, scatter club. Uh, this is a community of the streamers and players. Before the release of the game, we, we, are, we are, <clears throat> are providing this game to our community, not just for them to analyze and receive their feedback. Just recently, we launched our new mechanic, it's Merge Up Game. Yeah, and uh, we received before, on the process of testing, we received from our community like 97% of feedback positive rating, which is really extremely higher. And even the figures right now, prove our theory that these games will fly, yeah. 
That's fantastic. But with uh, over a hundred titles, with over a hundred games, how are there some games that you kind of you take to market and they don't get that ninety seven percent, and you're kind of like, okay, we need to either tweak that, develop it, or maybe we can put that one to the side. And then the game that you just mentioned is called what? Uh, merge up. I love that. So I mean, what a great title. So is that the, the, then you kind of hone down those hundred games to focus more on one? Or do you just say, OK, let's produce as many games as we can? Uh, we, we are trying to focus just on the market because we are uh, open for our, for our baby gaming brand. We expand our presence in the market, especially in the European Union right now. We start from Romania market. We are going uh, in this year to Italy, to Switzerland to Spain as well, to Bulgaria, and we are trying to uh, focus on the features which will work and to the games which will work for the players at that specific markets. But see, now you got into the conversation about markets, and this has been such a big topic here at Sigma Europe 2023. Right. Not a lot of people are talking about Europe. You've just mentioned all of these European companies, right. uh, countries. I've spoken to a couple of people that have been highlighting Europe and saying, OK, Europe was the big market. Then we moved away. We looked at LATAM. LATAM's been the key word. Brazil, South America, uh, South Africa's been just mentioned, and also the Sub-Saharan Africa, Asia. These are, these are kind of buzzwords that people are talking about, but not a lot of people have been talking about Europe. What is it about Europe that you guys are, okay, this is where we need to be? We definitely need to be everywhere because <laughs> we are targeting all over the world. And like, my role is just to make everything, to make sure that we present everywhere in each geography. Yeah, and this year we also like um, launched a huge marketing scale campaign for the Latin American market. And definitely we will continue to develop and work with our partners and looking for new partners in Latin America countries in the next year, in 2024. Okay. But nevertheless, we are open and we're sure our games will be very successful in the European market, on the licensed um, markets in, in European Union. And that's the steps which we are very strongly, like, this is the path we are going right now. And we are just working on, on that, just to present to our audience in European Union our games. Yeah. So, Lushina, if you're looking at, at difference in markets, in, and I'm, this is a huge question for me. I always like asking this, yeah. but if you're looking at Europe and then you're looking at, at uh, LATAM and you're looking at Asia, you're looking at Africa, you can imagine that there are cultural differences, that you have to tailor the games, you know, even colors. I was talking yesterday about Asia, colors, the, the, how the dragon is represented. It's all very key. You've got to know the nuances of those markets and that's why Asia is a bold, brave market to go into because those nuances can make the difference between uh, between winning and losing, literally, for a content creator. Now, if you look at, at uh, LATAM, you're looking at Brazil, it's a little bit more relaxed. Now, I want to ask you about Europe. We're going to stick with Europe because we're right here in Europe and you mentioned the European Union, but surely there are differences between what might be appealing to Ireland or to uh, a, a Nordic country or it might to a Balkans country. How do you cater for that? Because that means, uh, well, let me ask you, does that mean a different game or does it mean tweaking and tailoring a game to a different market? Uh, right now, we are trying to uh, offer to the, to the players like trendy games, yeah? which might satisfy the, uh, the needs of the players, let's say, if you are focused on Europe, of the European uh, uh, players, uh, you know, just to receive, to, to um, increase the engagement, retention. We are working on the personalized lobby for, for, the, for the players. But at the same time, we understand that some games will be better working with some features, with some visual content will, on the thematical matter will better working let's say in Italy but this game will not work with the, with the exactly RTP but will, this game will not the same well uh, successful so well success let's say in Greece yeah and that's how we are trying to diversify our portfolio let's say for example for Latin American market we know that the scratch games is very popular there and we just recently released our um, scratch alpaca this is uh, the scratch uh, type of the game. It's pretty new for the gaming portfolio, but as we are focusing on that market, we are trying to to provide for the uh, for the players 
what they like, what they will be ready to play and just be happy to do that, you know. And that, of course, is crucial to success. Right, exactly. Absolutely. That's, that's what, what we're thinking of. <laughs> so let's come back to the stand. This little badge, I love this. And you look amazing. And I love it, you know, the whole thing going on. The stand that you have here, this is at Sigma. This is, I mean, this is the largest Sigma that we've ever had. It is uh, over 500, uh, six, I think 600 uh, exhibitors, 600 stands. You're here. How has it been for you? You've come along, you've talked about your beautiful stand. I've seen it. It's great. How has Sigma, how have these past three days been for you? Um, I could say those days we make more stronger relations with our existing partners because, as I mentioned before, we participate almost everywhere the Sigma events with our stand. That's why we are strengthening our partnership. Uh, in terms of new partners, uh, we are like in the future, we already signed the agreements with Poker Stars, with Betfair, with the Flutter Group, with the Jarba. This like very, very huge, significant uh, names in, in the, in the uh, gaming world as well. And here we like, as well, like uh, shake the hands finally <laughs> and uh, go ahead with, with them, with uh, their brands. Probably that's the main idea for us to be here, to, to show that we are strong, how we are growing, what new we can provide for our existing partners in the market. That's, I, I could say it's pretty successful uh, event for us as usual. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you're not the first person to say that. They're not uh -huh. the first person to say, who sat here and talking to me and said, Sigma Europe is all about solidifying and, and making those relationships yeah. stronger rather than, right. you know, it's been a whole year of business. We're at the end of the year. This is where we've been talking to our customers mm -hmm. and now we get to meet them face to face and just say, you know, I'm so glad we're doing yeah. business together. So, of course, we're at the end of the year. We've just got a few weeks left before 2003 is all over. So I'm going to ask you the same question as I've asked everybody else. What has been the single biggest highlight for 23 for you? I could say that uh, the biggest highlights that we are entering into the Greece market, we enter to the Romania market, we signed the strong partnership and went live with uh, like, let's say Playtech, with Batson Group, with, so, with NetBat, with so significant players in the world market. Yeah, that's what we are proud of, that those uh, companies, those uh, partners uh, identify us like a strong game provider, who we really, we are, yes. And um, that's probably the main uh, significant market for us for the 20 2023. But of course, we are looking forward for 2024. And I'm personally like putting for, for myself, for my team, a very high target just to spread our brand all over the world, to uh, develop uh, the destinations and to, to achieve bad, uh, bigger expansion in the markets where we are planning to release our products, our well, you, games. You mentioned some of the biggest names in the industry, yeah, and I'm going to recap to the beginning <laughs> where you said you're five years old. Yeah. That is phenomenal. Absolutely. I absolutely agree. And I could say we reached this so huge uh, growth within two, three years, because at the beginning we was not so strong probably in terms of our product, but, so, uh, but our player-driven approach, which we are every time um, focused on, that helps us to, to make the name, to make the brand awareness be between, uh, among our players and of course among the B2B so well-known brands like, like I mentioned before, yes, as I mentioned. I before. am so pleased for you and I really, really yeah. wish you all the very best for 2024. Let's sit down at the end of next year and see <laughs> how the year goes. I'm <laughs> cheering for you. I hope it goes thank really, you. really well. Thank you. But thank you. Thank you so much for your nice wishes, for your nice words. And really, we are very proud that you invited us here just to say how we are successful in in the was in this year thank you one more one more time thank yeah. you thank you <laughs> great